It's your boy, Young Ted. Today, today's episode. That was your eye. That was your eye, dude. Still crying. What the hell? How'd you do that? I was just driving, and I poked myself in the eye <laughs> while driving. <laughs> yeah. What is it? Pokey in the car. But with your hand. Yeah, with my fingertip. You're trying to give someone the finger. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you do it? Yeah, it's just spaz. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty. Bro, if you're an Uber driver, you would end up doing that and then pulling over and asking your passenger to drive. <laughs> 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 Take me to the hospital, man. I'm blind. Oof. Bro. How long did you cry for? Thanks. <laughs> Legit about five minutes. Like, I was crying for so long. It's like me at the UFC on Sunday. <laughs> the sun was in my eyes the whole time. Oh, oh yeah. Man. I was behind a tree and then, like, it crept off. We all had the sun. Yeah, <laughs> man. It was so sunny, yet it wasn't even warm. But, like, it was where we were sitting. Like, I would get, like, so sweaty. And as soon as I walked to go get a beer, I'd be, like, freezing cold. Like, it would all turn to ice or sweat. Man. <laughs> it's so bad. Well, last night? No, at the UFC. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I was freezing and sweating at the same time. Mad. <clears throat> Dude, I predicted three out of four fights, I was just going to say, bro. <laughs> so good. I made money on your bets. Thank you. You owe me. <laughs> Poor Aaron McGregor. Up to you, Mr. Caden. <laughs> The thing is, I want McGregor to win, but like, I just don't know if he will. Like, I haven't seen him training or anything. I don't know. I don't know either. <laughs> and there's like heaps of UFC fights where like the bigger guy just gets knocked out in like round one for no reason. <laughs> and like everyone was expecting him to win. How good was that Nate Diaz, bro? Oh, At dude. The end. So bloody. Yeah. I was losing my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I was so close, man. I can't believe I put my money on Nate. At the last minute, I just decided to change. Otherwise, I would have got all of them right. Mm. <laughs> last minute, I just decided to put my money on Nate. The co-main, I totally thought Davison would like, just uppercut the shit out of him. But he just oh, yeah. looks tired. Didn't I like change my bet the last minute on that one as well? Did you bet on Moreno? I think I did. Did I? I don't know, but I only paid like two dollars. I feel like you didn't want to because it seemed close. I don't know. There's one of them I didn't bet on. Man, it's such a good UFC. Is the mm. McGregor one this weekend? No way, bro. When is it? Three weeks. Man, they advertise those things early. There's free ones every week. You got one or two really lit fights. This podcast is brought to you by UFC Fight Pass. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Dude, have you been watching the news lately? No. I no? watched the news. What's up? Dude, uh, you know Friendly Geordie's right? The, the YouTuber that like talks shit yeah. about politicians. Is he the thick one? No, he's not thick. Oh, okay, I don't he's know. He's like skinny. He kind of looks like he's gay, but I don't know if he is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But anyway, uh, him, he, they've been making heaps of videos about John Barilaro. And then, like, they went to one of his speeches and, like, yelled out in the crowd, like, calling him out for being corrupt. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. that was the first time they saw him in public. Second time they saw him in public, mm. like, he just walked up to him and he had the lawsuit that John Barilaro gave to him. And he's like, yeah. hey, bro, like, I want to give this lawsuit back. It doesn't make any sense. Like, you can't be suing me. And Joe Varelaro gets the police to go to his house and arrest him just for that. Under stalking and intimidation. Wow. Yeah, bro. And, like, it's just crazy, man. Like, a politician can ask the police to do anything they want. Really? Well, arrested a journalist just for doing his job. Oof. It's crazy, like... People, like, families and domestic violence, like, if they wanted to get their husband arrested for stalking, like, it's so difficult. They would have to, like, stalk them, like, 50 times to get arrested. Yeah. Whereas this guy just talks to John Farrell twice, 
and they have an anti-terrorist squad come to his house and <laughs> arrest him. It's ridiculous, wow. man. Apparently, Holy like shit. multiple journalists have been arrested for no reason this year. Like the liberal government is so corrupt, man. They're just controlling the police. Was this in Australia? Yeah. Oh, matey, mate. Of course, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Corruption. But um, Oof. this labor politician started a like a police watchdog thing on it. Yeah. And they're gonna do an investigation into the police and like why they're like how they they're acting like a big mafia just for the politician. Yeah. It's crazy. Nice. I just can't believe it. Like we could say something wrong on here about a politician and get arrested for it. Like we just don't <laughs> even have free speech anymore. It's scary. It was because no one's cared about privacy. And mm. because you, everyone puts themselves out there, or even on Facebook, so anyone can see what you say or you're doing and investigate you or find out where you are. It should oh, be yeah. allowed, though. No, no, it shouldn't. But what? Nobody stopped, uh, kind of stopped. I, I mean, I think Facebook and social media are really to blame. Mm. Come. <laughs> Come. Come to the mic. <laughs> I don't know because <coughs> sure Facebook and social media are getting people's opinions out there oh, but see. that's not a bad thing like people sure. should be allowed to put their opinions out there and oh, they shouldn't be arrested you for it I mean, of me. We have what do you mean? Hey, no. What do you mean you think <laughs> it's uh, Facebook's fault? What do you mean by that? I, I just mean that um, people just open their lives and talk about themselves so they can be followed. Hmm. And people who, even if it's something in your living room, you can see what people have, the books that they read. Um, so you, you just lose your privacy by putting yourself out there, even, even this podcast yeah. you know people know your views and you have you have to be careful what you say um yeah because it might be seen as inflammatory or racist or well, yeah. <laughs> and I, I after mean, the last episode yeah <laughs> and i've been asking about QAnon. do you know about QAnon? yeah i know about that yeah. apparently scott morrison is like best friends with this guy who really supports QAnon. that's what was on that yeah, was on the news on the news last night was a big sing about it yeah and, and apparently they've been talking about how he's invaded like he's trying to get to scott morrison and convince him to believe in all the QAnon things and he briefs him before he goes to the u.s about the QAnon stuff oh yeah so you do know about it yeah I bet you haven't. that's why i don't watch the news <laughs> i don't care about these people but like if you're a politician you should expect people to be doing research and calling you out for everything you do but he's just shutting everyone down that points out his corruption They've got a monopoly on all the water in the country and they're trying to sell the water and profit off it. Oof. There's so many issues that, yeah, just that water is another whole thing that's going to become a... It's a valuable commodity now because we're in such a dry country. Mm. But even if you... The thing about um, intelligence is if you say QAnon and that triggers someone to start following you because they think you might be either following it or saying something dangerous to the str to the state you become a person of interest a, mm. a POI and <laughs> that's that's what a POI is in police reports person of interest it's and it's really funny because if you look at all of the media outlets like the the mainstream media outlets mm. like all f like five of them all released the same story that that they're sort of on the other side to everyone. They're like, oh, John Barilaro is in the riot. This guy has been stalking him. It's it's good that they arrested him. But then every other journalist that's not mainstream is like, this is completely wrong. You're shutting down free speech. And it's mm -hmm. like the government is in control of what the media puts out. Well, it's a, yeah, it's a powerful conservative government. Um, and if you have any views outside of a right wing government i think yes you become um you know potentially dangerous you're seen as a mm. left-wing radical or you know q anon case a left-wing um what are they satanic 
satanical pedophile. Oh, <laughs> it's yeah. Just too, too well, yeah. And my brother was saying something like that to me last night. It was like showing me this video where this preacher is talking about how yoga is demonic. Oh. Wow. Like, yeah, and he's yeah, trying to say yeah. that like everyone that does yoga is like a demon worshiper and they're all doing the work of Satan. And it just got me so fired up. I was so angry. Just had to leave. That's why house. I don't watch the news. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but you got to it's know. It's all negative. No, that wasn't on the news. No, man. but you, I've heard that like from years ago mm. where often in churches they didn't want yoga classes because it was considered somehow connected with Satan, whatever that means. I mean, it's just so ignorant you can come into any yoga class all you see is people stretching oh, i know yeah struggling and puffing and or in my class trying hard to do it uh, yeah and it is it's sort of infuriating to have those negative ideas circulated so people say oh, i'm not going to do it my children are better not do yoga and then they're so judgmental towards mm. these groups of people and you can tell that there's like a tension there i just hate it and this guy's talking about how he's... What is that stuff? <laughs> soap. Oh, it's soap. <laughs> no, it's pink lemonade. Yeah. Oh, look at it. Yeah. But like the, the yeah. spiritual side of yoga, it's not really like a religion. It's, it just helps you visualize where you're sending your energy yeah. in your body and it well, helps you, you release your you muscles. You know about that too. Oh, yes. Mm. I mean, there are, there are yogic practices that are... Um, well, they're not dangerous unless you push your own body into a dangerous spot but mm. I mean the ultimate idea is if you control your breathing and control your body enough you the kundalini energy which is basically your energy that sits in the different chakras or energy centers and it will rise up through the body and you might become enlightened or you might have Ooh. this ecstatic experience and I mm. think so that yogis people who just live for it um probably want that experience but it takes a long time i can tell you yeah <laughs> even in a lifetime you don't necessarily get enlightened but then some people just whatever experience that ecstatic moment well that's what buddha did apparently in the forest after 12 years of meditation is, but is enlightenment when you like it feels like you can see the whole universe at the same time. Yeah, I, I think some sort of. Um, I swear I've had that experience once. Like I could, it looked, have. it zoomed out to like a whole clock, and I could see like the whole universe in every single, mm. every oh, single oh, that, way. Oh, that's interesting. You have to yeah. do some more meditation study when you can. For sure. So, like a clock, meaning y you. You saw what? The three well, I saw all the planets and all the planets, like the gravity affects each other. And the, it's like they're tuned like gears in a clock, like in a watch. Oh, wow. And so the gravity actually all joins together to make the Earth perfect. And then if you zoom out even further, there's a bunch of different universes where mm -hmm. all the life forms are like slightly different to each other. And then like it zooms out like a spectrum of like all the different types of life that exist in all different universes. And I could see it all at the same time, and it was just ridiculous. Oh, wow. <laughs> but then yeah. in an instant, it just all goes away, and it's so mm. hard to remember. Mm. But oh, yeah. God. Did you try to write it or draw it, even to do a Not really, drawing though. of it would be so interesting? Yeah. Um, yeah, I've had an experience of seeing the earth from a distance. I was out of my body, but what I saw was um, the pollution. But uh, and I, it's hard to tell a time period. It's like the earth was covered in this kind of sludge, but as I looked at it, it started to all pull off. Something was changing, you know. So somehow, Ooh. yeah, it, it's we had done something, and who knows whether that's in the future, probably beyond my lifetime, the way we're going. Because some people still don't think, they don't take it seriously, and they don't think climate change is real. Mm. Although Morrison sort of forced into it. <laughs> going to a meeting where the other world leaders are acting on it um, but yeah and then the sludge lifted off the earth and it, it became blue you know it was that beautiful blue the thing ocean. yeah but it wasn't a feeling of hope all I thought was like when 
Mm. Oh shit! Uh, when <laughs> you know, is it? Ah, oh, it's for me and Aiden's grandkids. Just thinking suffer. about that, like, fine. it could be a metaphor yeah. for something like how the world is right now. There's like a cloud of division, and there's all these borders separating mm. everyone. And maybe if that was lifted off, it would be like the world is just one. Everyone well, yeah, comes I together. think. I think so. I think um, often whatever you see is. Um, a symbol or a metaphor for for yourself. Yeah, there could have been me that needed the sludge lifted off, and I had to purify myself some way, um, or my life. You know. So yeah, you you might have seen the universe within you. It's not just mm. without you, but it's within you. Yeah. What do you think, Jason? It could be interpreted yeah. so many different ways. Oh yes, yeah. If I have to study psychology, my water there. Is that enough? You finished? Oh, I got it. Is that it? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> Next topic. Well, I was talking about Grandpa. Mm. We went to the Blue Mountains this weekend because we wanted to see the snow. Mm. But there was no snow. Oh. And I was asking him, like, has he ever fired a gun before? And then he just dropped it on me, like, yeah, he was in the Army Reserves <laughs> like, during the Vietnam War. Oh, oh wow. yeah. And apparently he like was firing like a big M60 machine gun and like mm, he's fired yeah. all these different guns and he's even been up in the mm. planes they had back then, the big bomber planes. It's just crazy. Mm. Like have you have you ever fired a gun or do no. you know anyone that was in like a war or anything? Well, oh yeah. I my brother, the oldest in the family, my actual half brother was in the Vietnam War, and he was, wow. yeah, he was killed in action. Wow. So yeah, there's a war. The axe dog. How old was uh, he? He was 33, and uh, he got the Victoria Cross for bravery. Oh, wow. could, yeah, so he was one of the first VC. So. Do you know the story of how he got uh, it? I do, but it, it's a long story. <laughs> you yeah. don't want to. Yeah. I'd love when to you, hear it if you want to tell you? it. And it's, well, it's in. Um, I mean, I didn't know him but in books there um uh the story of what happened the battle and and he but he apparently saved a number of men he went outside Legend. the bounds of duty that he he wasn't he was meant to just be in the office or recording he'd finished or something but he knew the Viet Cong were coming back and he went out to save men and wow. so the first time he did it I think it was seven men I mean it's it was almost nice. too much to take in when, and he went out one time and bought some in, and that was fine. And I believe people were saying, "Don't go out; you don't need to." You know, the gunfires all around, or something like that. Mm. Uh, and but he went out again, and he got shot. So he he lost his life um, saving other men. He's a so, hero. Yeah, he's a hero. And yeah. but at the same time, back in Australia my generation were basically protesting against the Vietnam War. We didn't think well, yeah. people should be there. Yeah, if they want to do and, communism, mm, we let them. Well, <laughs> no point killing them. Uh, was that racism, that fear of Chinese, they were saying, mm -hmm. they talked about the yellow peril, the idea that... <laughs> well, <I> know, yeah. <laughs> wow. And we know it's not a yellow peril, so... Yeah, even, I'm coming for you, Nan. Even as a very <laughs> young person, I, I knew that it was ridiculous um you know i had asian friends in fact i had a vietnamese friend i went out with a young vietnamese man who was the sweetest most gentle man and um we knew this wasn't true and we didn't think australia should be there that we were just trooping along it always gets political we just thought we were licking american boots you know mm. like we'll go we'll go to war and 500 men, 506 young men like you were killed in the Vietnam War. And to what Oof. purpose, you know? And we knew they were dropping napalm, which is, you know. Yeah, and that stuff's they're nasty. They're still yeah. having, well, it burns and raised the forests and killed the animals. But still, babies are being born with malformation with because of the napalm in the system. So even two, two generations on... They're having these awful disfigurements, or they're born without hands, or I mean, it's just Whoa. too awful. Yeah, so still, and we haven't really acknowledged 
um, our role in war, but it's still happening. Did our um, countries ever go over there to try and repair Vietnam? Or? Well, yeah, I think we had a lot of Vietnam Vietnamese immigrants after the war, and a lot mm. of them settled in Cabramatta. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so Vietnamese food came. Okra. There's a good show about yeah. that. I saw. Yeah. Oh, Do you know that Vietnamese guy? That makes... I saw it in school, the heroin dealer. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, there's this Vietnamese guy that makes really good shows. Yeah. Oh, Ando. Ando, oh, yeah. Ando, yes. Yeah. yeah. He's pretty amazing. I love his stuff. Well, that, you know, as a result, they came as immigrants, but they were often very poor and had to work yeah. in the worst jobs and probably people despised them. Um, and, of course, drugs came one way to make money or feed your kids was to sell drugs. So... Mm. In a sense, Australia yeah. paid the price that way. Um, yeah, I saw this awesome doco of a Vietnamese gang. Did you? Yeah, it was yeah. fun. And it's so yeah. easy for countries to adopt that, like, that generalization of a group and hating them because, like, a small number of them did something. Like, with Indians, mm -hmm. like, my mom got scammed by Indians and she lost, like, 20 grand. And for a while, mm. like, I just... I had something against Indian people. Yeah. Like I thought they were all mm. like that. But then uh, after watching like a lot of documentaries and meeting a lot of Indian people, like, they're so kind. And if people are sick, they, instead of like telling them to go away, they like bring them towards them to look after them and mm -hmm. feed them. Nice. Like most Indian people are really nice. Most, yeah, I think yeah. most have very good hearts and a lot of kindness. Yeah, and... that's since you've been eating those bowls. Oh, oh they're curry so bowls. tasty, man. Potato, potato puri. Oh, so like they're good. nice, yeah. Have you had that down um, at Epic? Uh, I haven't been to an Indian restaurant for ages. Uh, well, they were. We had three in a row. I mean, we had three all together, which is kind of overdose. Uh, mm -hmm. Curry lovers and Rang Mahal and someone else. I don't even the know. Thai what's place there. is the best. There's a lot of Indians <laughs> coming to Australia. I've yeah, noticed. yeah. I wonder why. But, uh, well, because it's a better place to be. <laughs> that's why. Yeah. Yeah, I think if people people know there's a higher quality of life, often they don't know how hard it might be just to change. But look, this is very. You've got to talk more. I'm talking. Oh, yeah. My voice is. Cat, get your tongue, Jason. <laughs> oh, that's, isn't that a terrible phrase? <laughs> Have you ever thought about joining like the army or the reserves, Jason? No. Never? Why'd you put that as a thing? Oh, I've thought about it before. Uh, oh, yeah. It's, it's because your granddad was talking about it. And, mm. Yeah. I know I mean, it can be a good thing for young men. <coughs> as long as you don't get too militarised. You won't survive, Aiden. And, <laughs> and not, not at the moment. <laughs> <you're in. laughs> well, the reserves don't even go to war. You, like... Usually they're just in the country. What if a war <laughs> happens and you're a reserve? Yeah. No, they can call you <laughs> out. Yeah. 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 If you were in the army reserve, they might have, well, they call for people to volunteer. But at a certain point, you, you, yeah, you are volunteered by mm. the army. But, so you don't necessarily go, but you may. And if you have a... Well, some physical disability, it can be anything. You don't go, like, you know, if you can... If, for instance, you've got a rib that doesn't work properly. <laughs> <laughs> or you've got flat feet, that's a reason they won't take you. I think if they needed people, I would go, because it's, it's our country, oh you know? Yeah. You've got to stand up for the country. Well, well, hopefully you'd go, but only if it was an imminent, imminent threat, threat yeah. of invasion, not, not because... Yeah. We decided to declare war on Papua New Guinea or Gosh. something, <laughs> or Malaysia, or yeah. Didn't Papua New Guinea help us out in the Vietnam War? Yeah, I think in all wars, yeah. yeah. Actually, that was a bad oh. choice. Um, Indonesia is more likely to yeah. want to want living room in Australia at some stage because, you know, years ago I heard there were three million men in the Indonesian army, and I thought. Gee, that's a lot of men. They could walk over us. Three million. Yeah, wow. just in the army. We, yeah. That's like more people than there are in Sydney. Yeah. Is it? Oh, no, less. No. no, maybe there's about five million in their army. There's five or six million just in Sydney now. It's huge. Wow. Yeah, we're a big city. So it goes out so far. 
I was reading today about um about mining for some reason. Apparently, the biggest iron mine in Western Australia is owned by China. Oh, I didn't think you might be right. I would have thought yeah. it was Gina Hancock. Oh, was she, <laughs> she's a, Gina Reinhardt. Uh, she's Reinhardt. Yeah, yeah, Reinhardt. Hancock, she was. I think they might have, uh, their mind might have run out and China's like opened up oh. this giant. She oil. ate it all. <laughs> <laughs> She, would like to she was a phoenix, and she just ate all the iron. <laughs> oh, that pattern looks like a um, pangolin. <laughs> you know what that is? The creature with all those. I love pangolins. Oh, yeah, they're beautiful, poor creatures. Jamie, pull up but, pangolin. Um, we, we should look that up, though. You I, know what I, a pangolin I, looks like, don't you? No, I don't know. It's like a, a mix oh, between yeah. a skunk yeah. and a dragon. Whoa! But are you, oh, it's really beautiful. It looks a bit like a, a sloth or an anteater, and it's got these strange quills, but it's very gentle. Yeah, it's like an anteater. So the Chinese, is, some people eat it, but they're, Ooh, they're quite rare now. Yeah, look. See? Oh, that's sick. Yeah. Oh, it's cute. That's awesome. And when you touch them, they apparently roll up in a ball. <laughs> in a ball. Is yeah. that where they got Sonic the Hedgehog from? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Wow. Sonic the right, Pangolin. I'm going. Thank you for letting me. Um, Thanks for coming. No worries. <laughs> Can you drop an N bomb again? And what's an N? <laughs> no, I'm not going to drop any bombs. <laughs> I don't want to be disgraceful. Can you drop an R bomb? <laughs> um, rude. <laughs> I'm about to drop an album. <laughs> yeah. All right. Bye to everybody. Laters, man. Laters. We want that light. I will be right. Oh, do you know this guy? Yeah, What's I his know, name? I've seen him. That's Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh. <laughs> nice. Think, uh, this is the funniest yeah. statement ever. <laughs> Democracy is by the people, for the people. But the people are retarded. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Shout out. If he could drop an eye bomb, we can. <laughs> yeah. He's got books, man. <laughs> he must be smart. That justifies our art bombs he, he writes books <laughs> he writes I mean, books man i mean come on man do any of you guys have a book written i don't think so <sighs> show this indian guy respect i don't think he's oh, indian man. bro oh. <laughs> oh man good jujitsu today oh yeah i still have my tiktok to make good jujitsu today yeah, I filmed it today. Yeah. What was what was the move? The same one. I forgot. Did you move clubs or the same clubs still? Uh, I'm just gonna stay. I might move to Castle Hill or oh, West Penno. West Penno is lit. Oh man, it's getting cold down here now. Might turn the heater up. Oh yeah. Uh, gonna go for a muffin break. We'll be back. Muffin. gives you like tingles when yeah. you listen to it and they put so uh, much emotion in it it is i think he's he was very charismatic the thousands of people followed him even in australia mm. and uh and i went to um the ashram you know which is the place where people get up at six and meditate and 
and everybody wore red. Um, red because it was the colour of the first chakra, the colour of energy and movement. And Is that like Buddhism or what, uh, what doctrine would that be? Uh, he was a Jain, a J-A-I-N, but I think he was just Bhagwan. He was Rajneesh and... Just spiritual. Spiritual, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and he said, don't follow anything and don't follow me. Mm. But people did, yeah, yeah. People really did. As they always do, yeah. yeah. I'd be a good guy to learn from if he's like, oh, he's not locked in. I did follow him for a few years and then, but then he said, it's over. The, I've got another book, The Experiment is Over. Hmm. He said, um, and don't wear red. So he kind of stopped it. But there's a whole drama on... Was he just trying to see how many people would follow him or something? Well, then uh, he had this sort of special... Thank you. Uh, as happens, this coterie of people, you know, like his own special followers who lived with him and um, one of them, the top woman Sheila, tried to poison him That's such an Aussie name <laughs> <laughs> Sheila <laughs> <laughs> Wow, she tried to poison him, what the hell uh, Well I wasn't part of it then I, I was what? in Canada what? And the whole, So the whole thing and I think that happens with any movement that it's, it, it's exciting, it's good, it's change it rises and then at some point it starts to fall and it's human nature yet corruption or danger comes in. So Except like, milk boys that'll never fall. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. So is that milk you got or something? Yeah. Yeah, yeah there's plenty of milk. As you Yummy. Know. And this guy looks like he has like 10 girlfriends or something. <laughs> well I think, yeah, I think women did kind of worship him. Wow. He mm -hmm. just never actually worshipped him but yeah, his voice is very hip. The guy fainted just by seeing him. I might get some tips from him, eh? <laughs> but there's other books, you know, there's smaller books. That's the, the big one. That's the no book. That's, you know, say no to everything. What's, the, what's on the front? No yeah, the no book. No Buddha, no teaching, no discipline. Yeah, mm -hmm. Jason, you approved before that. Sounds so contradictory oh, yeah. to, like, what most teachers would teach you. Oh, exactly. No, no. discipline. No! <laughs> Yeah, I think that's what he he's saying. Like, don't be a disciple. Yeah, don't yeah. be a disciple. So yeah. in fact, you gather thousands of disciples. <laughs> I know what he's a Zen master, and so yeah. Zen is it's like kind of neither this nor that. You can't, you know, you can't kind of pin it down to anything. So Zen is a, an interesting study in itself. We're vibe masters. Mm. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Bring it over. So we got some more light on yeah. us. That's it's pretty good. Do it carefully. Yeah, yeah it will. Yeah, because it doesn't feel that stable. Yeah, try not to trip on the cords, which Jason did before. Nearly wet the mic, didn't he? Jason? Some good lighting right there. Well, Beautiful. I, yeah, it's better, isn't it? That was Beautiful. Um, well, someone was going to throw it out, and I thought I could do it with that. Thing. That's so good. See you in a bit. Ladies, nana. Talk too much, what are your topics, bro? Okay. My eye. Your eye, is that it? Yeah. <laughs> this is number one in the world. <laughs> well, think of one. Quick, quick, quick. <laughs> um, Five, um, um, four, three. I didn't probably announce that he's gay. Did fucking not. <laughs> That's what the headline said. Which media outlet? <laughs> Two Mops YouTube channel. <laughs> I saw I saw a comment on one of our videos. Mm. Uh, it was this chick, and she was like, "Wow, Aiden's so sexy compared to Jason." <laughs> Did you see that comment? <laughs> no, you're full of shit. <laughs> Legit, bro. Someone commented. Oh, that. I bet with my mom. <laughs> Nah, bro. Wait, have you got your phone? No. Use your phone. I can't see the comments on it. It doesn't work. What? Yeah. No. It's bullcrap. But I swear that's what they <laughs> said. I swear. <laughs> Goes home and makes a fake account. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Straight. I was walking through Parramatta today, mm. and I was like trying to put on like my sexiest face, mm. and all these chicks would like look at me, and then they'd like look back like to a second look. And I'm like, nice. Fuck yeah. Get in, man. It works. Man. That no fap energy. Yeah, maybe. No, because like sometimes I walk around and I'm just like baked as fuck. Because I haven't smoked weed in three days. That's probably why. Mm. Usually I walk around like a zombie, but today I was like confident, full of energy. Everyone kept looking at me. Nice. I think when you're stoned and people look at you, like you assume that they're judging you, like in a bad way. Mm. But when you're sober, you're like, no, nah, I'm a sexy motherfucker. They're looking <laughs> at me because I'm sexy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, hell yeah. You should just always assume that. Like, don't assume people think you're ugly. Dude, I mean, you are ugly. You just got bad taste. I don't know. I'm not trying to brag, but I've fucked with 30 girls. Really? With this Bonnings chain around your neck? <laughs> you fucked with 30 girls? Yeah. Slipped her in. Slipped him in. And they're probably all way over 120 kilos. No! <laughs> Except for Jody. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm compensating <laughs> by dating Jody. He's actually only fucked five girls, but they all weigh <laughs> they all weigh like <laughs> enough to make it like it's thirty. <laughs> right. Who's the fattest girl I've had sex with? Yourself. <laughs> ah, I know who it is. No name dropping, bro. <laughs> Her name's Elsa. Elsa Can't be called Elsa and be ugly That's like That's a crime Elsa Elsa Chan Elsa Chan <laughs> No I'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> Remember Miss Chan from high school? Yeah Dude I follow her on Facebook Oh nice It's so good I always like her photos Man I should go back and follow all the teachers Miss on Bortros Facebook Miss was thick But she was lesbian So I couldn't have a detention with her Dude, man, do do you ever think about like going back to school just to say hi to everyone, like all the teachers? I mean, all the teachers. Yeah, yeah. We should do it, bro. Or like put on a gig in the hall at school. <laughs> How mad would that be? I've just had dreams about in. that. Bro, I've had dreams about that. Like just like performing at like a school assembly. It'd just be fun as. Yeah. It probably inspire so many kids to be musicians as well. Fuck yeah. Like, once we're popular, we'll go back to schools and do that. Just for free. Yeah. It'd be lit. Let's get to that level. Hell yeah, bro. Oh, man. Yesterday, I had the best Vietnamese food ever, bro. Raw pork in boiling water. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? Uh, um, crispy chicken. with Vietnamese fried chicken. I've never had that. I love Korean fried chicken. It's nice. They don't coat it with stuff. They just straight up. Oh, it's just it crispy, crispy without like any batter. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, it's tasty. Dude, have you seen deep fried strawberries? No. <laughs> they look pretty good, man. Yeah, I bet. Oh. I'm deep fried your dick. I don't know. I was like way too quick to judge Vietnamese food. Man, they gave me this like raw beef in hot water. And it's just so bad. I couldn't even eat it. I was Bro. <laughs> growing up just from smelling it. You look like how Judge Judy looks these days. <laughs> hey, Judge Judy's sexy, bro. So thank you. Bro, Jamie, bring up Judge Judy. <laughs> no, trust me. Bro, Judge Judy's she a looks, She's She's like past her prime now. Her prime was when she was like 50. And now she's like 70. I'd, I'd still give it a go. Bro, Not you have to lie. look her up. Trust me. <laughs> Judge Judy 2021. Double Moppers, you can look this up with us. <laughs> Judge Judy recent. <coughs> oh my god, she looks exactly <laughs> like me now. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> Dude, I am not shaving, man. As soon as I shave, everyone's gonna be like, Judge Judy! Far <laughs> <laughs> out. Uh, just the school kids. That, like, she's still looking good, man. She's got those, like, cheeks. 
those, yeah, like, those round ass cheeks. Maybe you have the hots for her because she looks like you. The hots for her because she's so like assertive, man. <laughs> she knows what's happening, bro. Yeah. Like, she's in fucking charge, bro. Hey, yeah, she's the alpha man. Bro, I sound like such a beta bitch. <laughs> 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 but dude, it's it's kind of it's kind of sexy, you know. I would date a judge. I liked her when she had like my hair. But now she's like has your hair, so I wouldn't fuck her anymore. Judge Judy had six nine hair. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking when? Did she have dreads and like colours in her hair? When? Oh yeah. <laughs> Did she get face tattoos as well? <laughs> Imagine Judge Judy just oh. came in just looking like six nine. She's like, What's up, <laughs> bitches? I changed my vibe, yo. <laughs> <laughs> Some guy would just laugh while she's been having a serious talk with him. You, give me some coke after this and I'll let you go. <laughs> <laughs> Man. I bought a bag last week. And it was so fucking worth it, dude. It was nice. so good. Man. It's so funny. Like, usually my brother, like, talks to me. Like, when he's not talking about religion, he talks about these, like, really complicated ideas of, like, how words have energy to them and, like, where that energy comes from and, like, how they derive from, like, ancient cultures and stuff. And usually it just goes right over my head. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> but when I did, when I came home, like, all, like, zapped as fuck. Yeah. Like, I could actually understand what he's saying. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, dude, you're, like, mega mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. It was amazing. And then it just helped me, like, sort out my my songwriting method like i got it all together sweet like it just makes you think better like I, I realized like your rhythms you have to get them from somewhere mm. and like i was watching that podcast with dave from van halen yeah and like he was talking about how like when he goes for a run there's like a certain rhythm you can hear when you're running or like if you listen to animals walking like horses riding there's a certain rhythm that they have yeah and, like, those rhythms contain an emotion in them. Ooh. Whereas if you just make up a rhythm from your head, it's not really going to contain an emotion because it's not, like, a natural rhythm. It's, like, it's man-made. So you don't really know what kind of emotions behind that. But if you capture a natural rhythm and you base your song around that, it's got some kind of, like, natural emotion to it. Oh, it's Derived from that. nature. Yeah, where So last night I was writing this song about, like, I was imagining the rhythm of, like, hundreds of horses riding in, in, like, an army. Like, what would that sound like? How could I play that on guitar? Yeah, yeah. Like, it'd be intense. That's probably how they write, like, movie songs. Like, whatever's happening in the scene, they, like, pick out the rhythms from from what what's happening in the scene, and then they try to imitate it on the guitar or, like, on the piano. It's so cool. They just suck up the mood. But like, yeah, instead of just writing a random song and adding lyrics to it, you get the lyrics and what they mean, and then you find, like, how there's already rhythms in that, and there's already melodies in that, like, hidden, and then you can use those melodies to make the music for the song, and then it all just fits together so perfectly. Oh, juicy. And, like, for my lyrics, instead of trying to think of, like, philosophies to push, like, because that's kind of cringe, you know? (laughs) Like... Instead of that, just thinking of, like, childhood memories that are really emotional and they make me feel something. Mm. Like, basing my songs off, like, memories instead. And, like, rewriting memories in, like, poetic ways so it's not so direct. But, like, so it can be interpreted in heaps of different ways. Like, yeah, yeah, it was just so good, man. I got my songwriting method down. Like, my music's gonna have so much meaning and emotion in it. Nice. I'm... Oh, I'm gonna try post Malone one day, and do shrooms and then Damn. drink beers while on shrooms. I've had his song stuck in my head since you played it to me. Uh, Hollywood's bleeding. Yeah, Hollywood's bleeding, yeah, man. It's that. so good. Just the lyrics on that. How did you get that? Yeah, he's hot. <laughs> Posty knows how to do it, man. He has his hair back. So like me, are gone. <laughs> dude, I'm gonna grow my hair out so long. Like you yeah, look at wait. so many musicians when they start out, their hair is like down to here. Uh-huh. Like everyone, there must be some reason we're all the same person. Whoa, <laughs> yeah, mate. We all want to grow our hair out. 
<coughs> just mad. Like, people that grow their hair out long, you know, like, the type of vibe they have, eh? They just want to be natural. Like, their little nature. Hell yeah. Fucking... Oh, yesterday, did you see my Instagram <laughs> post? Which one? Um, Harvey the dog was just yes, barking, barking at some these random owls. Owls. <laughs> God, He was so, like, Even angry. when he could tell it wasn't moving, he's like... <laughs> <laughs> How dare you troll me like that. <laughs> Man, Grace always growls like that. It's so funny. Oh, imagine her with owls. Man, she's so good at catching flies, though. She just runs yeah. around the house and catches a fly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, even cockroaches. Oh, wow. It's gross. Like, I saw her eat a cockroach once. I'm like, gross. Ah. Disgusting animal. Yeah. She's so good at jumping now, man. Like, before, she couldn't get on the couch. Now she just jumps on top of you. She's, yeah. like, all over your face. Ah. It's so cute, though. Yeah, Harvey keeps trying to lick my face. <laughs> yeah, same with Grace. <laughs> do dogs get, like... Do they get, like, the flu? Or do they get sick from anything? Yeah, I think so. They do? Yeah. Grace has been, like, so tired recently. Oh. Uh, she's been sleeping every day. She seems kind of sick. Maybe because she's in your hot box. <laughs> I never let her in the hot box, man. Yeah, good. Although when I'm outside having a J, yeah. like she'll come out and, be like, <laughs> and then like it hits her and then she just goes and like digs holes everywhere. <laughs> Whoa. I try to blow She's it away so from her. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Use a condom though, yeah. <laughs> For what? For Grace. My dog. Oh, your dog, Grace. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I would need a condom for my dog, but okay, I will. <laughs> yeah, well, you know how I fucked a dog last week? So I thought you Well, you obviously like, didn't use one. You fucked a staffy and got staphylococcus. <laughs> That's why I said use a condom. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Good advice. You're speaking from experience. Thank you. Got you, bro. <laughs> Just watch out. Dude. Oh, who's that? Who's that giant, like, black fighter with the mad haircut, but he's bald on the top? Uh, you know that guy? Kimbo. Kimbo Slice, oh, man. Yeah. Dude, have you seen his UFC fights? Yeah. Bruh. <laughs> he's, he's scary, man. When's he gonna have another fight? Or is he he's out? He's dead. <laughs> you know Whoa. He died like this year. Whoa. <laughs> what? Yeah. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> no. <laughs> My whole life is ruined. <laughs> no. <laughs> I wanted to see Connor versus Kimbo. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. Who would win that? Kimbo was such a fucking legend though. Yeah. He's the biggest beast. He was so... He looked really cool. Did he ever lose a fight? I don't think he did, eh? No. He's never lost his whole life. You I see think his... he eventually lost in UFC. Bro, his street fights were fucking crazy, man. Mm. Oh, dude. Like, he got bored of them. He's like, he's like I, I'm the only one fighting. No one else is fighting. <laughs> like, I'm the only one that's actually fighting. Everyone yeah. I go against, they can't fucking fight. <laughs> it's crazy. Mad cut. I just love... <coughs> I love heavyweight fights, bro. They're just on another level. Yeah. They should get paid more, I reckon. They get paid the same. Like, the thing with heavyweight is that they're so much bigger, but the head is still just as easy to knock out. Yeah. So if they get hit once, they're fucking out. Yeah. Like, damn, bro. Because their punches are so hard. It's like getting hit by a truck. Like, man, especially nice. Kimbo. Like, when he punches, like, oh my god, it breaks the sound barrier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for Francis in the next fight, bro. I can't believe Kimbo's dead. What the fuck? Why yeah, did nobody man. tell me? <sighs> That's really sad. I'm going to light up a J just for Kimbo tonight. <laughs> and watch all his fights again. Hell yeah. Fuck yeah. Mad respect to him, man. 
Bro, I love the Paul Craig fight. I mean, not because I won money. <laughs> like, That's a pretty good fight, though. Just twist this guy's arm in seven different directions. And the rest just like, <laughs> what? Didn't he Keep break fighting. it? He broke it, didn't he? Apparently, it just got dislocated and they popped it back in. But you could see it, it was like jelly. I thought it yeah. was here. Hey. It was up here. Yeah, I think his shoulder got. Oh, bro, out. his shoulder probably came down to there. Yeah. Fuck. Brutal. Dude, on Bondi Rescue, there's so many people that dislocate their shoulder. Yeah. And then they get the green whistle. Have you seen the green whistle? Oh, the gas. It's, yeah. it's not gas. It's like, it looks like a vape. Yeah. And then they breathe in and they get so fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> They're just like, oh, fuck it, I <laughs> <laughs> And like the kid, all the Bondi Rescue guys are just laughing their asses off at the shit these people <laughs> say. <laughs> it's so funny. Isn't like 90% of it Asian now? Oh, yeah, bro. All the rescues, <laughs> yeah. They, the way they treat Asians is so different to, like, white people. <laughs> they treat them like dicks. Bro, they hate tourists, eh? Like, Loki. They're like, why the fuck aren't you swimming in the flags? What's wrong with you? And then they're like, they can't speak Shamala. English. <laughs> yeah, they're like, huh? <laughs> and they're like, can you not understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Swim between the flags. <laughs> Five minutes later, they're just swimming again. <laughs> <laughs> and then the narrator's like they just oh, ban them oh, from the nah. beach sometimes they're just like you're not allowed to swim anymore bye bye yeah. they just ban them it's crazy I love awesome. Bondo Rescue I love racism to Asians honestly like I just bro this sounds so bad but I want to I really want to get my shoulder dislocated just so I can have that green whistle <laughs> <laughs> once I did dislocate my shoulder but it wasn't a Bondi it was at Hillsong Camp and they didn't give me any green whistle, they just popped it back in, no painkillers. Was that the time I went to the gig as well? And then I fucked up my same shoulder. Yeah, I think my shoulder was still hurting and then we went to a mosh pit together. And then the dude was like, we have brilliant security and I want everybody crowd surfing. So I was the first one to crowd surf. No. And then I fucked up the same shoulder as you. And I was like, hey, we're in this together. They were threatening to kick people out if we crowd surfed. Yet the band was telling everyone to do it. Like, the guys would be like, oh, if you do this again, I'm going to kick you out. All right. It's fucked up. It's North Lane's fault. <laughs> kicking out Adrian. Dude. Man, I'm addicted to Quantum Flux again. It's just such right. a good song. I showed it to it's my great. brother. Because he was telling me, like, oh, I just hate heavy metal. Like, it's it's Satan music. So demonic. <laughs> I'm like, bro, do you listen to the words? It's beautiful. It's so beautiful. Mm. Infinite potential. Yeah. It's crazy. Dream awake. Myself, my world, my people, my home, my everything. Deep. I like the power they can put into their words as well. Yeah. You done making condoms, bro? <laughs> Show us one of your rings, bro. Blow a ring. <laughs> oh, you know what I learned the other day? Suck dick. Yeah, do it. Yeah. Fuck yeah. yeah <laughs> I couldn't do it for so long. Dick. For the audio listeners, he just went down and sucked my dick. <coughs> Why is that always on your mind, bro? Like, I know I'm sexy, but, like, damn, you need to control your thoughts. Bro. <laughs> Some things don't need to be said out loud. <laughs> you look like... You look like you're a transvestite from when you were born. Like, you were already naturally the opposite gender to what the doctor said. My dick actually, and you're rolling with it. My penis has a vagina on the end of it. <laughs> Same. <laughs> it's just a really small vagina. That's crazy. Big like, dick. Is I forget which way around it is, but I think everyone starts off as a girl, and then like your ovaries drop down into balls, and the vagina yeah. turns into a dick. Technically, we are all transgender. Yeah. That's crazy. Like, how do we all start off as girls? What the fuck? What the fuck? 
Maybe. Oh, I know why. Because we're cloning. We're getting cloned by our mother. Doesn't that kind of prove, like, the Bible wrong? Because they say that everyone came from Adam, who's a guy. But, like, we all start off as girls, so it kind of doesn't make any fucking sense. What? So you're saying girls are Adam? Well, we all, we all start off as girls, and, like, the Bible says we all started off as a guy. And then, like, God removed one of his ribs and made, ah! a, made a woman out of it. <laughs> what the hell? I know, it makes no sense. Like, if God created the first human to be a man, wouldn't we all start off as men in the womb, and then the men would turn into women? Hold on, if God took a rib off and put it on the guy, wouldn't it just make him have a big dick? No, nah, because if you look at the anatomy, guys are missing one rib for some reason. Girls have more ribs. Yeah, I think so. That's hot. <laughs> it's weird. Like, we got more ribs on one side and we're missing one on the other side. Oh, we're missing one rib. Yeah, oh. I think so. I could be completely full of shit. Yeah, I think you should get off the fucking heroin, buddy. <laughs> I wish I could get my hands on some of that. I can't get it, man. It's so expensive. Come to my car, then. I'll sort you out. Dude! The Adam and Eve story has led some people to believe that men have one fewer rib than women. This isn't (laughs) true. (laughs) It's not even true. It's not even fucking true. We all have the same amount of ribs. Wow. I've believed that myth, like, my whole life since I was a little Christian boy. (laughs) Since my mom told me. (laughs) Oh, my God. Dude. Well, I am going to have one less rib because I'm getting surgery to get it taken <laughs> out. It's rad. Wow. Well, I hope they don't take it out. Maybe they can just stitch it back together no or something. take it out. Dude, they better give it to me if they take it out. Better have some meat on it. They better take the fucking tar out your lungs while they're at it. No, they tested my lungs today. Apparently, they're fine. I was really shocked by that. <laughs> I was like, are you sure? <laughs> She's like, yeah, your lungs are fine. Uh, man, I had to do this really weird breathing test, like have this big tube in your face, yeah. make you breathe all the way in, all the way out, like as hard as you can, and then like and then your ribs snapped. <laughs> well, it hurt when I was doing it. Then they graft like my breath. This is mad. Sweet. It seems so like unsanitary. Like everyone that gets tested breathes through the same machine. Like they yeah. changed the tip on it, but like. Couldn't you catch corona from that or something? Like, there could be anything in the machine. How do they sanitize it? Um. Bro, I'm gonna get some weird, like, lung disease now. Nice. Oh. <laughs> what do you mean, nice? <laughs> Your lungs are strong to handle it, apparently, so don't worry. Apparently, if you, like, stoners can hold their breath longer, like, they're better at free diving because Ooh. they hold in, like, giant cones, their lungs have. It gives your lungs like giant capacity. It's like doing breath training. That's sick. Yeah. Fuck yeah. It's probably bullshit as well, man. I'm the best. I beat you in free diving. Oh shit. I free dive all the time, man. Bro. I do it at least once a year. I got the moves with my long ass legs. You ever been diving? Uh, (laughs) No. Then what the fuck? You never I, even been. I think um Jamboree, there's like a five meter. Oh, uh, you mean like you mean like diving into the pool? I mean like like diving in the ocean, like diving under the ocean, looking at the reefs. I mean, spearing was, a fish in the face. Yeah, it it was like it looks like nature. When I in Jamboree. Yeah. What? It's like all rocks and shit. And what the fuck? Fish and. In Jamboree. Nemo's. I've never actually been there. And stingrays. In Jamboree? Isn't that like in the middle of the land? How the hell do they have stingrays there? It's not even in the ocean. Could be somewhere else. Have Damn. you been to Jamboree? Never, man. I really want to go. Where you control the action, man. Yeah, bro. You have to go on streams, man. <laughs> dude. No, you got to come spearfishing with me, dude. I've got a yeah, spare bro. snorkel set. I bought it for Lily, but then that didn't go well. It's never been used. Yes. Bro, you can use it. You come spearfishing with me. Let's go, bro. It's freaky, though. The stingrays everywhere. I'll poke your asshole. 
Dude, what's with these fucking <laughs> homosexual fucking attacks, man? <laughs> Come on. Control yourself. What's the nofap done bro, to you, bro? Bro, I was talking about the fucking spear, not my dick. You, you said you want to poke my ass. Yeah, not with my dick. I mean, that could be taken many ways, bro. God, you just get your mind out of the gutter, bro. You literally <laughs> were just talking about me sucking your dick. <laughs> Don't tell me to get my mind out of the You're gutter, so bro. Wrong. Double Muff is <coughs> leaving the comments. Who is more of a creep? <laughs> <laughs> God, get your mind out of the gutter, <laughs> bro. I can't believe you've never been, like, diving in the ocean, like, scuba diving. Well, not scuba, but just, like, snorkeling. I think I've been snorkeling. I just didn't go spearfishing. Bro, I'm so mad. Stingrays have these crazy patterns on their back. They look like natural camouflage. Seriously. <laughs> Steve, is that a Steve Owen quote? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Steve Owen's quote was, Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, was that too soon? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't want to touch a stingray, bro. But man... They actually have, like, army camo, like, proper camo pattern. Like, legit, it looks like an army shirt. <laughs> How is that? Like, the army must have got it from Stingrays. They must have copied them. God. Stingrays are the original warriors, man. Yeah. Bro, I wonder if Aboriginals used to hunt them and, like, use their barb as, like, a spear. Oh. It'd be such a good spear. There's a poison everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Because they got big, like, bony barbs, man. I think... I'm, I think if they sting you, their barb, like, lets go and gets stuck in you. Because it's got, like, jagged edges on it. So it can go in, but it can't come out. Right. Or something like that. It's fried, man. It's like a bee stinger. Do you have to rip bees off? The stinger gets stuck in you. Really? Yeah. Emo bitches. Oh, okay. So the stingrays have like a big stinger, yeah. but then the stinger has little barbs on it. And when they sting you, the little barbs break off inside of you and they get stuck. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> yeah. Gee. Fuck, man. Yeah, stingray, stingray shot is serious. But the only sharks I've ever seen are so tiny. I've never seen like a big ass shark. Oof. It's still kind of freaky when a little shark comes up to you. <laughs> yeah man but the sharks like if you catch fish they'll try and steal your fish off you they could smell the blood they'll come up to you and be like <laughs> <laughs> she's like shoot little fucker the eels man apparently eels can bite your finger off like some people they wow. go around like you gotta wear gloves when you're like trying to get lobsters and trying to get oysters and stuff because if you touch the wrong rock and there's an eel, it'll just bite your finger straight off. Jeez. Like, some people wear, like, chainmail gloves when they go spearfishing. It's mad. Wow. That's pretty cool. I know some really good spots down south. Bro, you know, eels can also, like, bite your whole cock off if you're not careful. You mean the Parramatta eels? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I don't want to know what you do with the Parramatta eels, bro. Bro. <laughs> Talking about real eels that suck off whole objects this shape and size. Hey, if an eel sucks your dick, you just have a big dick extension, eh? <laughs> Bro, they actually can't. I'm one of the few rare people that eels can't bite my dick off because it's just too big. Because you already I have mean, an eel on your dick. Your yeah, dick is yeah. an eel. <laughs> yeah, it gets confused. It's like, oh, this is my mate. <laughs> <laughs> You don't have stack for cockles, you just got an eel stuck on your dick. <laughs> it's just an eel bite. <laughs> man. I told him not to bite. Eels are so funny though, man. <laughs> they have the weirdest little smile. They're like, <laughs> they come out of the rocks and they're like, <laughs> <laughs> You can see all their little teeth. Man, that's so funny. If you were going to be any ocean animal, which animal would you be? Bro, you already know I'm an eel. An eel? <laughs> it's just I would be off. like a crab. 
<laughs> like one of those massive ass crabs. Like, bro, you know crabs are so smart. Once I went fishing and I just dangled some bait over this crab. Yeah. It like, it grabbed it and then clipped off the string <laughs> and then stole all the bait. And I kept Get trying fucking it. Wrecked. It kept doing it. You got it. wrecked by a crab, bro. <laughs> I was like, how are they so smart? <laughs> Outsmarted by a crab. God damn. Oh, we used to we used to make these little spears and like go around the beach lifting up rocks and stabbing the crabs. Because then you can use them as bait on your hook. Oh, that's sick. And there's this fish called the blue groper and all the vegans are going <laughs> to... All the vegans are going to get so offended because it's like a protected fish. You're not allowed yeah. to spear it. But you're allowed to catch it on a fishing line. Mm. And man, my dad tried for like a week and he actually ended up catching one. It was so big. Nice. Man, tasty. it was tasty, bro. Oh, one of the tastiest fish. But they're so retarded. Like, <laughs> seriously, if you spearfish around these guys, yeah. they, they're not even scared of you. They just swim up to you like... <laughs> <laughs> like, who the hell are you? <laughs> Like, it would be so easy to spearfish them. But if you do, you get a massive fine. All oh, right. I saw this Facebook post today. Yeah. Someone caught, like, 200 brim, but they were all, like, this big. Right. <laughs> and, like, there's a minimum size for catching fish. Like, why the fuck would you catch 200 fish, like, the size of your palm? I don't understand. What are you going to make with it? Yeah. There'd be so probably, many bones. They probably have a thing for... Small people and animals, you know, weirdos. Are you gonna hang them on their wall or something? Make a fish necklace. <laughs> what oh would you do God. with two hundred baby fish? Like you can't even eat them. Maybe he's breeding them. No, they're all dead in a bucket. Um, it's right. You meant to leave the babies in the ocean so they grow into big fish and you can eat them. Yeah, he should have caught eels, man. Stuck him on his cock. I wonder if you're allowed to catch eels. Why not? Because the government says so. Well, you get big fines, man. There's heaps of, like, fisheries people going around checking. <laughs> Legit. Wow. Can you <clears throat> spearfish eels? Dude, you can. You can spearfish eels. Yeah, I told you. Freshwater spearfish genetic prohibited for fish oh california fuck california my phone died ladies but i don't know how it actually i have tasted eel they have it at the sushi place don't they it's yeah. kind of like it's really salty it's kind of gay it's not really that good gay yeah i mean look at where it comes from look at its whole body i do not follow it looks like a long penis. <laughs> You're eating it. That's just because you have an eel attached to your penis. <laughs> Most people's right, penises my penis don't look like is that. is an eel. I'll have you know. My god. My god. <laughs> Regan's... <laughs> Regan has like a tadpole where his penis should be and I have an eel. <laughs> <laughs> I know for a fact. <laughs> God. And then it's going to turn into a frog one day. <laughs> He'll just be like fucking his girl with a just frog. Just walk into Regan's house and you hear... <laughs> <laughs> he has like a tadpole where the arms started to grow out. <laughs> so it just claws into the badge badge. One of my favorite things is finding frogs, man. I love finding frogs. They're so funny. They're so unpredictable. Like, you just look at them, next second they're on your face. <laughs> <laughs> so unpredictable. Yeah, yeah, cool. About 90% of the time they'll jump on your face. Yeah, my South African boss the other day saved one. He's like, <laughs> Saved a frog? Luke Jason. <laughs> <laughs> Nature gives to us <laughs> what we give to it. <laughs> Bro. He says all this deep shit. Oh my god. Your he, boss is a poet, man. Right, he literally sounds like that every word that comes out of his mouth is wow. like from a book. Wow. Like he was telling me a story about he was just telling me the philosophy of like turning up to work early and like Does he come early? 
Yeah, he always, he's always there early. Wow. Get the work done, get home on time. But he just explained it in the most fucking poetic way ever. And I was like, whoa. It's good to have role models like that at work. Yeah. Like, I swear I learned so much when I was working, like, with all the boys in the timber factory. Like, everyone's such a good role model. Sweet. Yeah. Because everyone's hard working, eh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, like... Yeah, you just learn like what it what it is to be be a man. Stop being like a little bitch boy. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> like, there's a time when you got to grow up. Yeah, he full taught me a budgeting lesson. He talked about when he was in the army in South Africa. Everyone's forced into the army. He was telling me about all these African wars that he's been in. Fuck, he's been and, in like, wars. Everyone's forced to rugby as well. Wow, so he loves rugby. Yeah, he goes for rugby. all blacks. He's like, they just played, they just played a bit of rugby. Are you sure he's <laughs> South African? He might be New Zealand. He's definitely South African. Bro. South Africans and New Zealanders have the same accent. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> it's like a posh New Zealand accent. Yeah. Man. I really want to go to South Africa. Oh, you don't. I Peter do. will say you don't. Peter says it's so corrupt. Yeah, but the cocaine's really cheap. <laughs> 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 it's like 20 bucks a bag and there's like oh, yeah. beautiful nature there's like lions and stuff that's true lions and lions peter said there's like heaps of racism against whites because the government's black oh there's heaps of racism against blacks as well though uh, yeah bro reckon? yeah heaps man not the city he's from oh yeah racism against whites yeah, it's like they oh, yeah, tax it. the hell out of white businesses. There's like these black people that go around killing white farmers and stuff. Yeah. Damn. Probably because the the whites invaded their country and fucked <laughs> yeah. everyone up, and they're still salty about it. Fair enough, eh? Hey. Imagine like Aboriginals just come out of nowhere stabbing all of us. Have you seen Uluru? I mean, not. <laughs> Have you seen Alice Springs at night time? No. It's pretty much what it is, man. Damn. Dude, apparently in Queensland, <laughs> if someone steals a car and the police, like, find the stolen car, mm. they're not allowed to pursue. Like, they, they can't, like, do a, a police chase. They just have to call it off and let them go. So there's yeah. all these stolen cars just zooming around and they can't catch them. <laughs> so Mad. fucked up. And like, even if they do catch them, they're usually kids and they can't even send them to jail, so they're just out the next day stealing another car. <laughs> Nice. I used to know a guy that did that. He was telling me all about it at work. It's <laughs> like, yeah, we we just put on gloves and then we like sneak into people's house, wow. take their keys, take their car, and then leave the car in the front yard in the morning, put the keys back. <laughs> wow. It's like, damn, bro. Nice. It's so fucked. Like, I was thinking about it. Like, I should have gotten more angry when he said that to me. I should have been like, what the fuck's wrong with you, dude? Why are you stealing these <laughs> fucking cars? I was just like, man, that's mad. That's... <laughs> Fuck. It's actually such a dick move to steal someone's fucking car. Fuck you if you're doing that. Making mm. people feel unsafe in their homes. Yeah. Fuck. I always lock my back door now after seeing shit like that. It constantly just... Because so many people leave their back door open. Constantly just go around checking people's back doors. And if they can get in, then they just come in and steal your keys. Man. Fried. It's just groups of lads walking around doing that. Mm. Assholes. Fair enough. There's this group of people in Queensland. They're like, yeah, because the cops can't do anything. We're going to go do it. And they go around, they buy like a really shitty car. And they chase all the stolen cars and just crash into them. Yeah. And then when the little kids come out, they like get baseball bats and they beat the shit out of them. What the hell? Nice. There's no way you can do. The cops aren't going to do anything. And they're like, yeah, if we beat them up hard enough, then they'll stop doing it. That's hectic. It's mad, yeah. And the cops are like, well, we do. We do not condone people, you know, vigilantes chasing down thieves because <laughs> these people may think they're doing the right thing, but they could actually become offenders themselves. Like, fuck off. Hey. Like, don't charge them with beating up fucking people that steal cars. Fuck. Like, that... Did you see that? Remember that guy in New Zealand that shot up the mosque and killed like 50 people? Yeah. They just put him in jail and protected him so like he's in his own cell. No one can ever 
like come up to him and bash him Fuck. as if you're gonna protect someone like that if he killed 50 Muslims put them in the general population with all the Muslims let them do whatever they want yeah. to him let them fuck, fuck yeah. him up fucking asshole seriously the worst offenders should just they should get that justice from the from the other prisoners man like apparently it's a rule in jail if a pedophile comes in like a child rapist yeah someone has to kill him oh really yeah like <laughs> someone has to do it uh, like nice. the next one that comes in it's the next person's turn to do it <laughs> so, mad fucking good man I want to go to New Zealand so bad. Yeah, let's go. Let's have a nice trip. Next year? Wink, wink. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> What's the cocaine price in New Zealand? Uh, Like 150 or something. Cheaper than here. Pretty good. Not bad. I don't even have to ask. Cause we're literally the most expensive cocaine country. Yeah. Sure. And you still have a habit. <laughs> What's wrong with you? It's the best drug in the Just world. Wait till you go other countries. <laughs> no, 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 no. Why don't you use the money that buys cocaine to buy plane tickets? Because the more cocaine you buy, the more money you make. What? Because you think of fucking excellent ideas and then you create a fucking amazing you, business. So why don't you make 10 times as many ideas in another country? Because with the I, same money. I haven't made enough money to go to another country yet. If, with all the coke you've ever bought. <laughs> I could probably buy a one-way ticket to, like, Japan or something. Apparently tattoos, tattoos were illegal in Japan. Oh, really? Yeah, and they legalized them recently. Oh, but, no like, way. like, some places don't let you in if you have tattoos. Like, if you went to Japan, everyone would be judging the fuck out of you. Oh, like right. Some restaurants wouldn't even let you in. Hotels wow. wouldn't let you in. Because the gangsters in Japan are the only ones that have tattoos. Yeah. So, if you have tattoos, they just think you're a fucking Japanese gangster. Right. And they're like, fuck off. You'd have to go around wearing a onesie or something. <laughs> Bro. Fuck yeah. Japan's another place I want to go so bad. Yeah, it is. Yeah, fucking no. lost on my list because apparently it's expensive. Is it? Yeah. Like the plane tickets or just everything? Apparently everything. Yeah, there's like... There's so many people there. Like the house prices are really expensive. But I think everyone gets paid a lot there. That's good. Everyone works like way more hours. Like people work like 10 hour days. 12 hour days. Yeah. Far out. Ridiculous. We're in the best country ever. Sure. Sure. <laughs> Where else would you want to be? Um, Fiji. <laughs> Vanuatu. What opportunities would you have? Smoke weed, sit on the beach, <laughs> play a bit of guitar, go on a pig, Ooh. cook it. Nice. You know, just the relaxed so, life, the islander life, man. The islander life. That's the best life in the oh, world. Oh, yeah. That's the best life. I miss the Vanuatu weed. Oh, that's yum. Is it as good as this weed? Why are you holding up a dildo? <laughs> a silver dildo. Give this a sniff, my boy. I don't want to. Oh, it smells like your ass. Shut the up, bro. Oh, this is Why did beautiful. I smell that? Oh, man, that smells good. We do condone the use of ex- illicit drugs. Yes, we do. Yes. Dude, I was watching this Facebook video today about police officers, like, hunting down people that pick mushrooms in the wild. <laughs> and I was just cringing so hard. Like, this constable was just walking around in the bush, stomping on all the mushrooms. <laughs> The so the people can't eat them. That's so Little crazy. does he know, if you stomp on the mushrooms, it spreads the spores, so more of them are <laughs> <laughs> Fucking idiot. Oh, God. And then he's like, and then he goes and finds the people. As soon as he, as soon as they see the cop, they like tip out all the shrooms. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, oh, I haven't got anything. I'm just walking. 
Yeah. But like, fuck, dude. That's funny. It's crazy. They go around finding people for picking up things off the ground. Things that grow there naturally. That's funny. What? And he's like, people don't understand what happens when you eat these poisons. Like, this one guy, he ate so many shrooms that for four days he was walking around and he didn't know who he was and he sold his car for like a hundred dollars and then <laughs> he sold his cat for like five bucks. <laughs> he, just, he slept underneath a log and then <laughs> I'm just like, dude, that sounds like a great time. <laughs> like, fuck. Well, like someone is like, that's four days of his life. He's never going to get back. Oh, like, boo-hoo. Dude, someone, someone, <laughs> Four days of his life, he's never going to get back. So you put him in prison for four years. <laughs> what the hell, man? Stop punching people for doing natural things. Fuck. They're not hurting anyone. Oh, I don't give a shit. He's man. trying to say that psilocybin is a poison. I'm like, no. He's like, oh, we're just going around trying to educate people about <laughs> these poisons. Like, um, if you were actually educating people, you would know that psilocybin's not poisonous. <laughs> And that the other mushrooms are poisonous? Maybe you could teach people which mushrooms are poisonous and which ones aren't. Hey. <laughs> then you wouldn't get people getting fucking poisoned. Man. I heard these Asian tourists... My boss told me these Asian tourists mm. went bushwalking, found some mushrooms that look like the mushrooms from her. It just died. Killed, yeah. yeah. Died. It happens. And it's a really, really, really painful death as well. Wow. Like... If you eat the wrong type of mushrooms, it shuts down your organs like one by one and you just feel your organs like shutting down in excruciating oh. pain and like blood comes up through your mouth. Oh shit. Like the worst death, you start pissing blood. Wow. Fucked up. So yeah, guys, mm-hmm. educate yourself about which shrooms to pick. <laughs> Don't listen to the cops. <laughs> like man, the cops could save so many lives if they got the real information. Mm. But they just listen to daddy government. <laughs> Cringe, man. Fucking shroom stompers. <laughs> I bet the Smurfs, the real Smurfs, I bet they love shrooms, bro. Don't yeah, they man. live in little mushroom huts? I think so. So how come the fucking fake Smurfs hate them? Doesn't make sense. <laughs> we need to retrain the Smurfs. Defund the Smurfs. <laughs> Bro, you look like a surfer that's picked up skating. And thank you. <laughs> You're throwing me off. <laughs> <laughs> you look like a surfer that picked up skating. It's trying way too hard to look like a skater. Well, it's actually the other way around. I am a skater, but I've never surfed in my life. I really want to pick up surfing, though. You look like an alcoholic. Oh, I am. (laughs) Deeply. I'm deeply in love with alcohol. I was at the pub at 1.30am last night drinking a beer. On a Monday night. <laughs> on a fucking Monday night. Golly. Dude. Monday morning. But it, Oh yeah, Monday night. It was mad though. Actually, yeah, that's a Tuesday morning, isn't Tuesday it? Tuesday morning. <laughs> <laughs> you got a blueberry right on your front tooth, man. That looks so funny. <laughs> oh. I love the pub though, because if you win on the pokies, you just get infinite free beers. Mm. It's so mad. Hell yeah. And this one guy put like seven and a half thousand in. And he got down to like five thousand and then he pulls out. Like, bro, you just lost. You could have bought a fucking car with the amount of money you just lost. Fuck. You could've, fuck, man. You could have done so much with that money. You just invested it in Bitcoin for a day. You would have made like... Wait, they put so it on sorry? In the pokies. Seven and a half oh. thousand dollars in the pokies. Lost like two and a half thousand. Then they cashed out. Why? Fuck, man. It's crazy. I was just thinking of the episode title. Parramatta Eels. (laughs) (laughs) Vietnam flashbacks. 
<clears throat> Aiden loves to suck cock. <laughs> Dick jokes is never get old, bro. <laughs> never get old. I mean, you gotta make funny dick jokes, though. Bro, Peter's like 70 and he still makes dick jokes. <laughs> <laughs> this Asian driver just drives over one of our pallets with tiles. And then she's like, oh, sorry. And then... When she fucks off, Peter's like, sorry you won't cut it. I need a blowjob. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Did she have to pay for the tiles? She, <clears throat> he caught her up and then she came to suck his dick. No, she didn't damage anything. Man. Hey, you probably damaged more with your forklift. <laughs> yeah. The other day. Like, not again. Not again. <laughs> What'd you do this time? <laughs> Fuck's sake, Jason. I'm surprised you still have a job. So, there's a pallet with boxes of tiles. Yeah. Just like standing all together. Stick, t- sticky tape together. And you know, I thought sticky tape's indestructible after it broke my knees. <laughs> and then... Tiles are a lot stronger than your knees. Yeah, damn right. Fucking, um... So, you know how Castle Hill is, like... It's called Castle Hill for a reason. It's very hilly. (laughs) So, I parked the pallet down sideways. Like, on a hill. No. (laughs) The whole thing. Oh, no. But, you know what? The tape did actually save a lot of them. I caught... I only fucked up one of the boxes. So, anyways... The... The customer's ready to get him delivered. <laughs> so then... So then... Peter's just like... You know what? We'll just like... Take out... Tiles from the other boxes. Slip them in. <laughs> and Exposing they won't Beaumont Tiles dodgy <laughs> secrets. <laughs> A current affair is going to be at your doorstep <laughs> soon, bro. Oh yeah, get that promotion. <laughs> And that two mops. Far out. <laughs> Man, I was watching this video of these guys trying to put a marble countertop on a kitchen. And they're doing it like so carefully. And then it's almost on. And then snap, it breaks into like 10 pieces. And the oh. trainees just like throw all their fucking tools on the ground. <laughs> 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 Those marble countertops are worth like 20 grand. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, no. All the money they made from the job just gone. Fuck. Fuck, dude. It's gonna suck. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, I love being a tradie, though. It's so funny. Man, the amount of things we would fuck up when we were building trusses. Like, <laughs> we would, once we built, like, a whole stack of trusses, yeah. and then, like, some of them were, like, 10 mils off. Like, you, you can't send them out if they're, like, 10 mils off. Yeah. So then the guy's just like... Get the saw, cut the whole fucking thing up, throw it in the bin. Ah. It's literally like two tons of wood. You just gotta cut the whole fucking thing up and throw it away. It's crazy, man. And that's like a whole day's work that we've been doing and I'm just cutting it all up. No. It's so depressing. It's the worst when you're the one that made the fuck up as well. No. Like, it was on your side, you were supposed to measure it, right? Yeah. (laughs) Far out. Dude. But everyone made an equal amount of fuck ups. It was all good. Oh man, at my at my work, like I destroyed the the shed door because there was a pallet just leaning against the wall. Yeah. And then the door came down, and I was just on my phone, and then the whole thing went diagonal. It was oh, on ketamine. Shit. Yeah. And just crumpled on one side. Yeah, and then it cost them like five hundred bucks. One of the customers that day just happened to fix them for a living. <laughs> he's a garage door fixer. <laughs> yeah. No way. So then he's just like a 500 bucks is sweet. Wow. And so then the next day, he fixes it. And then the next day, fucking, I was using my forklift and like putting something back on the shelf. And then I just bumped into it a little, but I thought, there's nothing. <laughs> and then Peter closes the door and it goes all diagonal no. again. So I probably cost him like a thousand bucks. 
<laughs> you know Regan did that as well? The same thing. Jeez. He crashed the, the truck into the garage door and fucked it up. That what the work. hell? Yeah, man. It's pretty common. <laughs> wow. Bro, imagine that door repairman. <laughs> He'd like secretly put the tiles there because he knew it would fuck it up. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I know how to fix that. <laughs> Man. Yeah. Hey, at least you haven't made one of those like giant warehouse accidents where the whole warehouse collapses. <laughs> if you do, Jeez. make sure you get the video, bro. <laughs> There's no security. Oh, I shouldn't say this. You haven't got cameras. You haven't God got cameras damn. in the warehouse. Well, I mean, it's a bunch of tiles. It'd be pretty hard to steal them. Yeah. I mean, it would take hours to load them all in. You just fucking... I guess if you, like, hijack the forklift and then put it in your ute. You couldn't, though. Like, the keys would be hidden somewhere. No. Why am I saying all this Stop stuff? giving out of this information. <laughs> no, of course the keys are fucking hidden somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, bro. I'm just joking, bro. Bro, I... Tiles aren't a very good thing to steal. I mean, you steal them and you can only sell them for they're like a expensive. dollar each. Are they? Bro, they're like 90 bucks a square meter. Mates rates? Yeah, certainly. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've got nothing I need to we tile. We throw out so many. I thought we'd throw out shit at KFC. We throw out so many tiles. But I mean, they get recycled, right? No. No? No. What the hell? We don't recycle... That's we fuck. got better shit to worry about. The most depressing thing is how much stuff Coles throws out. They oh have a whole God. room just called the garbage room. Like anything Bro. that gets opened or dropped on the floor. I hate when throw meat it gets in wasted. Because oh, meat so much takes meat. so long to make and like uses so much water. Mm. It's always constant like shoplift. Or they try to shoplift and then they pussy out and they leave the meat just on the random shelf. Like so much food gets wasted from that. Why would... What the fuck? If you're gonna pussy out of racking something, like, put it back in the fridge, you fucking can't. Hey. God. Man, once me and my boss saw this guy racking, yeah. but he was racking bread. Yeah. So we were like... We probably shouldn't <laughs> stop him. I mean, if he's got to rack bread, he's yeah. probably, like, really poor, so we just let him go. That's so nice of you. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. if he's racking bread, I mean... I, it's like <laughs> bread and onions, like... Dude... He probably needs Damn. them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Coles really should give out free food to poor people. Oath, bro. Oath. They're so rich. Man, so many assholes would take advantage of it. Yeah, but it wouldn't be like nice food, just like bread and shit. Well, they, they do give out the stuff that's expired. I was uh, oh, at nice. this pig farm once, yeah. and they had this truck come from Woolies. Oh, and right. it was just full of like all this old food and they just feed it all to the pigs oh right it's mad nice. and then yeah then they went and hunted a pig it was so crazy to watch bro it's like clash of clans like one of the one of the kiwi guys he jumps on the pig's back yeah. and he's like riding it and he has a hammer and he's like hitting the pig in the head with the hammer Fuck. it's fun Whoa. And, then, and when it's knocked out then he gets a big ass knife and stabs it in the heart oh, wow. and he just knows exactly where it's fucking heart is Right. It's That's crazy. Cool. Yeah. He didn't like hit it heaps of times, like one hit and it's just knocked out. Yeah. And he stabs it in the heart. But then Mama Pig saw what happened and she's like <sighs> she like charges <laughs> and then they want to jump out. Cause like Mama Pig was gonna fuck them up. Fuck. Oh, That's crazy. Yeah, bro. It's intense. And then they Damn. then they bring it onto the table and they gotta shave the pig, get all the hair off it. Because yeah. pigs are super hairy. Right. They shave it, and then they take all his guts out, and then they hang it upside down so all the blood comes out. Right. So interesting to watch. Nice. And then, and then, instead of cooking it properly, yeah. they bury it in a pit with a bunch of coals and completely ruin the meat. <laughs> it just Why? tastes like fucking dirt afterwards. Oh, no. <laughs> like, man, if you're, gonna, if you're gonna kill pig, like, cook it nicely, you know? I don't know. I guess that's, like, the traditional way to cook it. No, it sounds like shit. They just, they dig a hole in the ground and cook it in coals in the ground. Like, bury it. The dirt. <laughs> Dude, they're ruining the skin. The best part. <laughs> I know, bro. I know. But it's the traditional way, you know? I'm craving a pork roll now, man. Why is there no 24-7 pork roll? Like, bakery should That'd open for midnight. Business. Or like a pork roll vending machine. Yeah. Bro, how bad would that be? 
You pick your ingredients on the screen. Oh, <laughs> dude, we should make that pork roll vending machine, Mate. man. Mate. That's a goal of mine. I want to open up a pork roll bubble tea business. <laughs> That's a lot of work, though. I, you have to I'll do have that kids' every day. mates, right? It's $10 combo. Dude. That's a good... That's... Bro, that's the best. Like, pork roll and bubble tea is such a good combination. Yeah. Why does it... Why is there no store doing that? What the hell? It's an untapped market. God damn. We just give out so many good ideas on this podcast. You yeah. guys are welcome. <laughs> <laughs> you guys should have to pay a subscription fee to this. Yeah. I reckon. You know what I hate? I hate how, like, those news companies make you pay to read their articles. Like, fuck. Really? Yeah, like, you know, like, uh, like Daily Mom. Mail or, like, The Age or whatever, like, those big news companies. If you want to read the article, you got to pay them, like, a subscription. I bet they put ads on it, too, when you pay. Probably. But, like, fuck, man. Like, every everyone else on the internet gives everything out for free, and then news companies are just charging people to read their shit. It's fucked up. You should just get ads. What's the point? yeah. I don't know. They probably get so many like less people reading because of that. Yeah. It's fucked. Our country would be so much more educated if they just got rid of that. Like, why is the media something you have to pay for? Hey. Should we, we pay should, for by the government? We should put two more podcasts under a Patreon paywall. It's just that good. <laughs> Yeah, and all two of our viewers will come over and pay for it every week. <laughs> yeah, two billion. Sorry, two billion, yeah. Nah, I hate holy. paywalls, bro. Maybe for, like, exclusive content. I'm just trying to watch this Pornhub Premium video. All of a sudden, it takes me to this page to sign up. <laughs> like, what what happened fuck? to NoFap, bro? That's why I started in no fat. <laughs> Just because of that. Yeah. God damn. Oh, man, I love living in LA. <laughs> it's so good. Oh, yeah. Oh, I bought milk for Dom today. Where is it? I asked him, like the Indian guy, I was like, oh, do you guys sell milk badam? And he's like, what the hell is milk badam? And what then the- another guy walks up to me, he's like, he's looking for badam milk. <laughs> and then the guy was like, oh, badam milk. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> the bottle oh, says bro. milk badam. <laughs> like, what? Surely. And he's like, no, we call it badam milk. <laughs> yeah, of course. Okay, buddy. Okay, buddy. Thanks, bro. I'm gonna get addicted, bro. They put heroin and poppy seeds in them. They actually put, like, one of the rarest um, spices in it. What's what it called? Is this? Saffron. This nah. is cardamom flavor. But they, they put saffron in it, which is, like, super rare. Really expensive. That's like, the stuff in MDMA. Saffron? Nah. No, no, saffron. Don't worry. But if you go to Woolies, the saffron packets are, like, 30 bucks each or some shit. They would always get racked when I like when I worked at Coles. Like there were none on the shelf that always got racked. Nice. People probably sold them on Gumtree or something. <laughs> I think it's like a spice that's more expensive than gold. Legit. Yeah. <laughs> like per kilo. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> we do not contone theft. You don't have a job anymore. <laughs> I still don't steal. You steal. Don't steal. I don't steal. You see the hypocrisy? I still don't steal. (laughs) (laughs) Bro. Smoking through your pods. Now I get how you come up with all these witty jokes when you're cooked. They just come so easily. (laughs) Yeah. Like not when you get super baked, but just like one coat. I don't know, like, it's so unpredictable, though. Like, sometimes you get baked and, like, your mind's fine. You can think of all these words. Yeah. Other times you get baked and you're just, like, Can't frozen in fucking <laughs> bakedness. Yeah. <laughs> you're yeah. just crispy. 
Yeah, crispy fried, me. man. <laughs> yeah, weed's like the most unpredictable drug. Yeah, you used to always say like it depends on your mental state. Yeah, it but does. you're also right. Like, yeah, it can just sometimes feel different to the last time you took it. it just depends on the way you pilot the high. Yeah, isn't it? It's like low level acid. Like acid, you really gotta pilot that shit. Oh, it's bro. It's actually a lot of work to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Compared, like the energy like, it takes. Like coke is easy to do. You just do it and you feel great. Like acid, you've got to put effort into making it great. Yeah. You got to, which is good. It's good. But yeah, it's so easy to just like close your eyes and then sink into a bad trip. Because mm-hmm. you're thinking about the wrong things. Think about all your regrets in your life. Yeah. That's the worst thing, regret. Like, regret brings such a bad, like, physical feeling to you. Mm. Like, letting go of regret brings such a, like, such a relief, such a euphoria when you let go of regrets. Yeah. But it's really hard, because they come back later. Like, regret's the kind of thing, like, you can't just let go of it once and it never comes back. Like, like you think of it again, in, like, ten years, it'll just hit you. Like, do you ever just lay in bed and then you think of like this one time like five years ago when you said something really embarrassing to someone <laughs> and then you're just like what yeah. the fuck did I say yeah. <laughs> that shit man when you're on acid that comes at you so hard <laughs> just like these are really? all the fucked up things you did <laughs> man I think I'm due for a trip yeah like it's different in shrooms eh? it's overall different very different it's like Similar but different. Yeah. Body. What was I gonna say? Oh, I had a cringe moment the other day of like, I remember like in my share house in Castle Hill last year. Mm. Like once I got so pissed at my roommate for forgetting to invite me to wherever they were going, <laughs> <laughs> I was I just yelled at him, pulled out your pants, and I tackled him. What? Pulled his pants down and what? started slapping his ass. What? What? <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. I'm like questioning whether or not I still want to be friends with you. <laughs> what the fuck? It's the guy thing I've ever done apart from jujitsu. <laughs> And he didn't stop you? How did he not stop you? Bro, because I got jujitsu skills. That's, That's like... literally rape. But... Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? That's like, my dad did that to me when I was a kid. And like, that's like abuse, man. That was traumatic for me. Oh, uh, well, he didn't have a dad, so I had to show him. Did your dad do that <laughs> to happened? you? Is that where you learn it from? Nah, my mom did that kind of shit. Fuck, dude. My mom would beat me man with what was the worst thing she beat you with a wine bottle bro wine bottle that's pretty bad Big stingray bro did it break no nah fuck dude it was empty it could oh no it's more likely if it's full eh? yeah i think so god yeah. what the fuck that's such a stupid thing to beat your kid with it could easily break hey uh, no my dad beat me oh with... her favorite was a tv remote tv remote yeah God damn it. My parents used that. It would have ended up getting snapped. They used to use the, wo- <laughs> like the wooden big. spoons. Yeah. No, nah, like they would use them to smack me. And afterwards, I'll go get them all and snap them all. <laughs> like, Fuck you guys. I'm going to break everything. Nice. And then he, and then after I did that, he got really pissed. And he got like electric wire. And like whipped me with a wire. So I'm like cutting up all the fucking wires. Like, <laughs> that sounds so cool. I always got revenge on them, eh? Nice. I think that's why I got beat so hard. Is I would never submit. Like I would always get back. Yeah. Like, fuck! Don't beat your children. It just made me hate my dad so much for so long. Yeah. Like I still, I still kind of hate him, eh? Yeah. I'm just gonna slap my kids' ass. I'm not gonna do anything more than that. You don't even need to, bro. You don't need to slap them because it teaches them that it's okay to get violent if your emotions are too strong to handle, which is not true. Yeah. It's, it's not okay to get violent. Unless someone's violent at you first. Like, if your kid comes at you and starts punching you, sure, slap him. I mean, I literally get slapped at work because everyone's, like, 50 and stuff. And they're, like, it feels kind of, like, hot. What? (laughs) (laughs) 
They just slap me and I feel like it makes me feel more comfortable with them for some reason. What, slap you on the back and stuff? Yeah, just like oh, on yeah, the well, arm. That, that's what I'm made to do. That's not Once like, on the butt. That's not like aggressive slapping though. I mean, all the women. <sighs> like aggressive slapping is fucked. Yeah. I remember in year seven, I was just waiting for the bus. And then like, I don't know. I think I stepped in front of this guy in line to get on the bus. Like a year 12. Yeah. And he just open hand just slaps me across the ear. What the my fuck? whole ear goes deaf and it's just ringing. Shit. Like my whole face is red. I'm just like, what the fuck? I was just in shock. I didn't even say anything to him. I just stared yeah. at him. And then he was like so mad. And then the next day he comes up to me, like apologizes for it. And he's like, <laughs> All right. It's like, dude, why the fuck would you do that? I've always had my ear always goes deaf now, like randomly, randomly like cuts out. Oh shit. Fucked up. Like his his parents probably slapped him when he was growing up, so it's just an echo of what he's been through. Yeah. But like, if you slap your kids, that's the shit that ends up happening. They end up being assholes doing shit like that. Yeah. True that. I feel bad for all these kids that have like ice junkie moms. Oh, I know. Like I always see them on the train, and their mom's like, "Get the fuck back here right now before I slap the shit out of you." <laughs> Oh, man. And the kids are, like, running away, like, down the train. They're like, ah! Shit. It just ends up making your kids not trust you and they hate you. Well, well, my not. Well, that's a nice way to end, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Bro. What? That's... This is the best podcast we've ever done. Obviously. Yeah, <laughs> it could have been, but then you and Nan just went on about freaking politics. Dude, that was awesome. That was probably the best part. Actual educational content. Dude, I was falling asleep. Well, you need to grow up and learn about politics, because <laughs> that's that's what changes the world, bro. Oh, oh. Aiden, you're so in touch with the news. Thank you. Politics makes the world go around. It does. Yeah. It's always... Our politicians so shit, though. Well, of course they are. No one wants to be a politician, so all the fucking retards become politicians. <laughs> I thought the people were retarded. <laughs> well, they are. Everyone is. <laughs> like, I think... If people weren't so judgmental towards politicians, more people would want to do it. Yeah. If people were more supportive of what they did right, instead of only focusing on what they do wrong. Like, literally, the media only points out what they do wrong. They never talk about, hey, they put through this law and helped out all these people. Like, when do you ever see stories like that? Fucking That's never. I watch the news. It's like, man, people would have so much more respect for politicians if you actually, you know, made stories about what they do right. Yeah. Imagine people that are chronically addicted to the news during quarantine last year. <laughs> watch the same shit again and again and spread panic it's so like, cringe shut the fuck up if you go on YouTube and you press news section every single video is like oh New South Wales corona laws Victoria corona laws corona policies corona fucking blah 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 I'm just like I don't give a fuck what the hell hey. else is happening what else is fucking happening man hey. there's not even any COVID left in New South Wales why are you still talking about it hey Maybe the politicians have all just done nothing for this whole time, so they have nothing else to talk about. <laughs> yeah, we need more gossip, man. Or maybe everything they do is fucking bad, <laughs> and they don't want the media to talk about it. True. Like, stealing all the water. Oh, we're going political again. Well, you'd I'm think, sorry, guys. You would think if the politicians owned the media, they would make the media write positive stories about them. Yeah. But they don't. <laughs> like, what the hell? It's all fucked up. At least, like, Friendly Joyce has some positive stories about some politicians. Sweet. Sweet. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Your replies are so dry, it's like talking to a girl on Tinder. <laughs> Your ass is dry. Wow. Yeah, it is. Thank you. You know when you have to carry a conversation on Tinder, 
Like every reply, she's just like, yeah, sweet, yeah, sure, <laughs> thanks. Oh man, yeah, I <laughs> they just exactly don't ask anything mean. back. Oh. I mean, it makes it easy for me. Like, I never want to date you, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks for making it easy. You look like. You look like if Lara Croft had a cops. Lara Croft is sexy. With a cops? I mean, I don't know why you keep comparing me to girls. <laughs> I've got a fucking beard. <laughs> Bro, girls aren't physically as competent as us at physical activities. So clearly, Ooh. we're the superior <laughs> sex. I'm losing so much muscle, bro, since I stopped paying my gym membership. These used to be square, and now they're, like, yeah, round. Remember. remember when they were fucking square? Makes me sad, man. I gotta get money. Bro, you look like you just came back from fucking New Zealand or South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> or Colombia. <laughs> you look like... An Ewok had sex with a giraffe <laughs> you would come out. Yeah. <laughs> maybe not a giraffe, maybe a really tall alien. <laughs> <coughs> if an Ewok had sex with 69. What the hell? With 69. Bro. <laughs> you look like... You look like Post Malone when he was in year seven. <laughs> hey, I got the Posty Mo. Yeah. Posty Mo. I love Posty. He did a podcast with Steve. I was. I love his smile. Nice. He's just got this smile where he goes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the most genuine smile ever, man. It's awesome. I want to hug him one day. Oh, this looks so huggable. Like, you just want to go yeah. up to be like, Thirsty! Oh, Shame man. I'm, a criminal. I'm, so good. I'm such a fangirl. <laughs> yeah, you want to wrap it? Do you like any cookies or drinks? <laughs> <laughs> it's been your boy. <laughs> Yeah, and it's been your dad. We out! Milk badam. But it's butter milk. <laughs> Come, maybe didn't know what it was just because I said it the other way around. Oh, bro, I was gonna say in the phone, like, once I went to Chinese, mm. oh, my phone died too.